Hey everybody, this video is going to be uh, pertaining to a 2016 Jeep Cherokee uh, that I worked on on March uh, 11th, that was yesterday. Uh, guys, I got to tell you right off the rip, this thing was a no start, um, no crank situation. Uh, I think it every once in a while a crank start and stall. I'm going to play the video clips uh, from that day kind of as how it progressed. I think I had about an hour and a half of time onto this thing. I mean, it was uh, more time than I wanted to be there for what I was doing. Long story short, the vehicle does start and run now. There are no lights. The customer's going to take it for a solid test drive before they give it back to their customer. Now, I will tell you guys, there are about a bazillion ways you could go on this diagnosis. And this video is not necessarily showing you the right way to do it. I just want to show you how messed up a vehicle can get and how to, or how I went about uh, getting it back in line. So here you go. What's going on everybody, Brian Man here. This is March 11th, 2022. Uh, getting some wicked weather back up in Cleveland. Uh, last snow I seen was when I left Kansas City on, um, uh, actually I think it was Monday or Sunday was snowing in Kansas City. But anyhow, guys, I'm off to an interesting one here. I think, I, I gotta be honest with you, sometimes I'm talking on the phone with customers and I can't keep up with the conversation. Like, I mean, I'm listening to what they say. I hear what they say and in my brain. I either say, yes, I can or no, I can't do the job. And then I hang up the phone and I forget what I'm doing. So uh, we're on our way to a Jeep. I think it's a 16 or 15 uh, Patriot or something like that. And uh, it has a code, uh, basically the customer's telling me it has a code saying that the PCM has lost its security identifier, which is very interesting. So I'm not sure what we're gonna find there. I'm thinking we're gonna go ahead and probably do a PCM replace function either in the radio frequency hub or in the WCM, wherever that function is stored. I'm going to look for it, and we're going to go ahead and do WCM, or I'm sorry, PCM replaced, and make sure that we can see if we can get the communication back. Basically, it's a handshake between the module that stores and reads the keys and the uh, PCM in this instance. So we'll see what's going on there. Uh, I've been super busy this week. I'm sorry I haven't been able to post many videos. I would need a full-time camera guy to keep up with what I've been doing this week. It's been crazy busy and been having a really good time finding a lot of broken wires and uh, also a lot of programming, which to me is pretty boring because it, it doesn't really change. It's all the same stuff all the time. So I'm not too excited to post those programming videos uh, unless it's something interesting. But I hope everybody's doing well. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know. We're going to go ahead and dive into this Jeep here. All right, everybody, we made it to this uh, Jeep. It is a 2016 Jeep. What is it, a Grand Cherokee, I think, when it looked like that. Cherokee, just a Jeep Cherokee. Uh, I'm just gonna plug in with the top down and check out the uh, codes we got. Just so you guys know, I'm new to the top down and I'm working on a couple uh, unboxing videos, but I thought I'd show you a little bit what, what's going on. This is the uh, interface device here. You see it says there's no communication for the vehicle present at present. This does not mean that the vehicle is not communicating. It just means that this device is not hooked up to the scan tool yet. As you see, uh, this little icon for B Bluetooth, USB, Wi-Fi uh, is not highlighted. So we're just gonna run over here <clears throat> and get the tool going. Let's hit on auto scan. And this makes it look like you are playing the lottery. It's doing this little uh, bing, 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 bing. It's gonna go ahead and ID the vehicle. All right, so it knows it's a Jeep, and there it goes. So um, now it says over here on our interface device, the vehicle is communicating. So just want to give you a heads up about that. Let's take a look what we got. We're going to go to local diagnostics. Um, and my device looks like I'm not on Wi-Fi. This uh, does mean that we are connected to the vehicle. And uh, please check if there are any other OBD components installed, remove, and then perform diagnosis. Okay, so it's communicating. Let's see what's up. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my internet, guys. This day and age, uh, most of these scan tools work better if you've got your little hotspot on. And people ask me all the time, what do I do? I, I hotspot off my phone all day long. So there we go. So here's our vehicle ID. We're going to hit OK. Let's see what we get. So this is our topology map, and I think we've got to go ahead and hit smart scan. So there's a gateway scan, um, there's a system scan, smart scan. Let's go ahead and do smart scan. I believe that's going to ping everything. 
And we're just gonna let this roll. It might take a second. I'll, I'll talk to you guys so you can see how long it really takes. Um, this is the first Chrysler I've had this hooked into. Yesterday I had a 2019 Civic. Uh, today, uh, this vehicle, I also plugged into a 15 Ford Fusion, just checking to see if this would do a parameter reset. And the option was listed, so I was pretty happy about that. So uh, we're rolling along here. Just so you know, you have all the different networks. The topology on this is not the actual, like a diagram. It's not saying that, you know, if, um, let's see if we can talk the radio, but not this, the breaking of wire must be there. That's not what this is. This is breaking it down. Uh, we have our high speed can, can high. Um, it looks like the PCM. Uh, so red means abnormal. I'm just getting my topology mixed. Uh, up on a Y-Tech scan tool, red would be like not communicating, no response. On this vehicle, uh, red means abnormal. Um, and uh, not scan, I'm just looking how they topologize this, uh, the legend. So let's go ahead and get a report. We want to do a report. I like the reports on this uh, scan tool because it sends it right to my email, which is awesome. So we're just going to hit, uh, hit this button and hit OK. And uh, I'm going to email this to myself real quick. Pretty cool stuff after the report generates. Uh, we can save it, um, and this is our pre-repair. So it's been saved successfully up there, and now we're gonna hit share, and I just go ahead and hit email, and I email it to myself here, and uh, we'll put this uh, Jeep. Check, and hit send. So sending succeeded, so now that's been sent to me. Now let's go ahead and hit open so we can take a look at the whole report of what this looks like. So, okay, uh, park brake failure, loss of communication with the gear shift module, implausible uh, transmission message, missing message, loss of communication with uh, gateway module, loss of communication with TCM, loss of communication with, well, there's a lot of stuff now. There's a lot of codes going on here. This is the type of situation where I'm glad to have uh, all these codes stored and reported, but I'm not even going to worry about them at this point. I'm gonna, just going to go ahead. I don't know what's been done to the vehicle. It's got some stuff, Mickey Mouse going on a little bit. So we're going to go ahead. Oops, I dropped my interface device. That's no good. So we're going to go ahead and uh, let's clear DTCs. We're going to hit clear all and start with that. And we'll see what comes back. I don't even know what this thing does. I got to actually uh, get with the customer or I'm just going to try and crank it. I think it doesn't crank or doesn't start. So um, it's going ahead and clearing the codes. You can see the modules that it's talking to right now. It's got the little thing like that. So interesting tool so far. Um, I did take out the foam insert that held all this stuff so I could easily hold all the uh, adapters it comes with because guys, uh, if you know anything about how uh, these cars can be some, or these uh, scan tools are packed. Sometimes there's just not enough room. I like to be able to put that big OBD2 cable up here and then uh, put the interface there and the tool there. But let's go back to our scan and see what's going on here. And we're still going. So it looks like right now I cleared all the codes and we're stuck with three codes in a PCM ABS. So let's just take a look here. I'm just going to click on uh, PCM here. We have electronic park brake system failure, implausible data from park from brake system, and a driver's door ajar switch. I love these newer Chryslers, man. They're starting to tell us in the PCM we got a problem like that. So let's go ahead. Um, hmm. Let me try and start this. <clears throat> I don't know what we have here. Definitely have a misfire. Okay, we got a crank start and stall. I'm gonna try it one more time. Start and stop cannot auto start, hood open. I'm not worried about auto start. Where's the auto start button on this thing? Taking you guys for a ride as I go ahead and figure it out myself. Not so worry about auto start, but I'm going to try to start one more time. It definitely started for a second. Let me turn this off all the way. Oh, guys, the key won't turn off now. Oh, there it goes. So I've made it uh, not crank. We had a crank start install. 
Now take a look at this dashboard and tell me what light isn't on that should be on. If you see here, we do have a red security light on. That is a uh, giveaway for something. So <clears throat> let's take another look around here. Uh, EPS. Hmm. ABS. PCM. So I'm really concerned about why is this security light on? Where's my radio frequency hub? Do we have a RFH on this thing? Let's take a look here. No DTCs, but I'm gonna go ahead and enter this module. Let's take a look. I, okay, so what's our special function here? I feel like I'm gonna be just uh, trying to do a, let's check the VIN number, make sure it's right here. Oh, performing this function may change the state of a vehicle. Exercise caution. So current VIN is this 98090 and 98090. Okay, so I don't want to write the VIN number. I'm just gonna back out of here, end session. So what is going on here? I think I might try another scan tool. Um, I do have the YTech, of course, and other things. What I was thinking originally to do was to do a PCM replace function if it's listed, but I don't see one listed here. Let me just double check, make sure I'm not missing something. But I would probably have to have the pin code. So I actually brought into the shop with me, um, uh, I actually brought in the Auto Pro Pad. I could use a 608 or whatever, read the pin, but uh, hmm. Well, let me go see. We gotta figure out why the security light's on. And I gotta figure out where these people have said that they had the uh, the uh, codes. Let's see here. They said they had a, a secret key missing code in the PCM. So I don't know where that was or how they did that. I'm gonna read fault codes just in case by some chance something's not popping up there. So all these implausible data received from brake control system. All right, so that makes me think, well, I don't know how that would relate to a red security light. That doesn't make any sense. So let's go back to our ABS and see what our ABS says. There's only one code in there. Invalid data received from the power steering control module. Okay. And the power steering module says invalid data from received from the ABS. So we got ourselves in a, in a catch-22 here, like, right? So, uh, guys, I'm going to put the camera down and do some thinking. I'll get back to you. Now guys, I'm kind of basing my, uh, it's only been like two minutes, I went over to talk to the shop. They said, no, this thing's setting a code for uh, tra uh, tra secret key missing in the PCM. I didn't see that code in our top don. So I'm just gonna go ahead into uh, our auto pro pad. And, okay, turn on uh, hazards, key off, okay. So let's go ahead and read the pin code here, see if we can pull a pin. So this is a five digit pin. One, um, this is interesting because I'm not experienced yet with the five digit pin, but uh, then we can go to immobilizer. And this is a f proximity key, it's a proxy key, right? Because we don't have a key to put in the hole. So let's go ahead to proxy. Uh, and I only have these, these buttons here, so nothing really I can do with that just yet. So that being said, um, this isn't really helping out much. Let me, and then I think I'm gonna plug in the Y-Tech next. Yes, it's off, turn the key off, and we'll get out of here with our auto pro pad. Okay, shut this guy down. And just like that, we've got over $5,000 of the equipment sitting on the front seat of this car and on the floor, right? Sure does add up fast. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into Y-Tech here. <clears throat> Um, I was having some issues this morning with a vehicle I was working on. It was uh, connecting the device. It would say uh, device connected. Okay, great. Not this nonsense. Now we got this issue again. Huh. Now it says device connected. Okay, I was getting worried again. Um, I was actually getting to this point here. Um, after I log in, doo -doo. Where basically I click on this and the next screen that came up would tell me to uh, Unable to, disc, unable to communicate, disconnect USB or something like that will come up there. But we're reading the same VIN. We've got 11 codes. 
Now, guys, two seconds ago, I was just in this vehicle uh, with the um, top on, and we had, what, three codes in the PCM, three in the, I think the EPS uh, had a code and a brake, so I only have five. So let's take a look at what codes we read here. Hey guys, if you're watching this video, I just want to let you know, uh, follow through. I'll show you what we did to fix it. Very interesting stuff. And also, when I was using the top down scanner, I don't think there's anything wrong with the scanner. Uh, guys, I'm short on time to edit lately, so I'm just kind of going to toss this thing up there for you. You're going to see it as, it as I let it rip. But, but I was using a top down scan tool, and there's nothing wrong with the scan tool there. It was a vehicle that was being buggy. It was causing all kinds of issues. So uh, follow along. We'll catch you later in where they're at. Now, we definitely have uh, some more codes. Let's take a look here. I want to go to all DTCs and uh, lost communication with TCM pending for the PCM, pending, pending gear shift module. So um, it very well may have uh, come up with electronic park brake, U3000. We've got a lot of stuff happening here, guys. This is uh, uh, quite interesting. Not sure what's going, what to make of this. We're gonna have to do some investigation. Go ahead. Oh no, you're fine. Uh, just so you guys know, um, on this RFH hub, there is no PCM replace function. That is the function I was thinking would make that secret handshake if this had the codes, but I'm not seeing the codes that the shop's telling me about. I see some other stuff going on. Um, especially, let's take a look here. Let's take a look, what are, where are we at here? One alert, what's alert? Um, look at this, there's a, an alert. The following DTCs are present for this vehicle. Please see the star publication for guidance. So we gotta go online to Tech Authority uh, and get this star publication. I'm gonna copy this and uh, I'd just like to see this because we may or may not have problems here. Attention, here we go. So they got us checking up some information here. So it's nice that Chrysler will try and alert you to some stuff, but okay. And here's the codes that the shop had on their scan tool. We had uh, engine controller secret code. That's in the body control module. U151487. Let me see if I have that showing up. BCM is right here. DTCs, no code. So I never showed a U14 or 1514-87. I never saw it. So this would make me think that that's why we would have our security light on. You know, we got our flashing security light. And guys, one other thing uh, with the keys on on this, in the run position, you see we got our key in the run position. I do not see a check engine light. So I'm starting to think about like some major power ground issue that might be causing a bunch of other, other issues here. Catch up with you in a minute. All right, everybody, so after messing around a little bit, clearing all the codes and going back and forth here, I got a couple codes that are interesting to me. This electronic park brake, ignition switch. Hmm, uh, that sounds interesting to me. It's a U300A, I gotta look into that code. And we also have an ignition run start um, input performance in our ABS. That's kind of things that kind of like pique my interest. And then also, take a look here. Right now, we're an accessory there's run. I do not have a check engine light um, whatsoever. Um, a lot of times I've had a couple Chryslers or other vehicles where like you wait a little bit and it'll pop up, but I don't see a happy light for the engine. So that's concerning me. And I should have noticed that before. I was looking for my printle actually right off the rip. And you see, we do have the printle. I can move the gear selector. It goes in and out, but we still have that security light on. And I'm thinking, well, if the PCM isn't talking to make other modules happy, maybe we got to ignition uh, switch input problem or something like that. Um, not that the PCM is not talking, the PCM is communicating, uh, but if there is something with a, uh, you know, an input that's not all the way there, that might be a problem. So we can peruse the data here. Let me take a look. Let's take a peek at our, um, we'll go into our PCM here. PCM data, and I just want to take a look and see if I can see anything that looks out of place. So ignition off, run start says off. Um, ignition start switch says on. Run start switch on, ignition start switch off. Uh, Chrysler's are always very confusing to me because their terminology is about terrible in my opinion. Um, just doesn't make any sense. 
So let's go ahead and type in, in the search bar up here, we're going to type in ignition. That way we get all these ignition ones. Um, so I'm going to make sure that we have some change of state here. When I push the button and hold it, I'm going to put my foot to the foot to the brake. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit that so you can see that's going to on. So I'm turning everything off and this is in uh, accessory on. There, everything is off right now. Let's go ahead and take a look. So ignition run start switch still says on. Now guys, I, get, I don't know if this is uh, right. I don't think this is right. I think it should be off. So ignition runs, ignition start switch filter state says off, ignition off. I wanna make sure this one goes to on when I go ahead and I'm gonna put my foot on the brake and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the button here. I'm trying to hold the camera still for y'all, but it's challenging. So everything says on right now, and that's off. Let me go with this one's always ignition start switch says on. So I do have this one ignition run start switch here always says on. That's kind of uh, troubling me a little bit. Okay, after a lot of manipulation, I've been poking around at wiring diagrams, just taking a look around a bunch of different stuff. I took this panel out because there is some sort of main circuit that gets uh, fed to the BCM over here. I think that's a BCM, yeah. Uh, you gotta make sure that's getting the juice. Um, don't know much about that, but what I wanna show you is I haven't disconnected anything else and I did get the engine control secret code message missing from the PCM. So the body control module here is saying that it's not getting the message from the PCM. So. I really got to be looking towards our powertrain control module now to see uh, what the heck is going on because we still don't have a check engine light. I'm thinking I want to check my powers and grounds to the PCM. Um, maybe we should even take a look around at the basic stuff that I always like to look at, guys. I mean, there's some stuff that uh, I don't care what I'm working on. It should be pretty straightforward. How does this thing come up? Man, this thing's stuck on here pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and take a peek here and see if there is... Uh, I don't know, I'm going to look for anything like, I know a lot of things got to be getting hot, but I don't know if everything's going to happen. I'm thinking about finding an injector or a coil or something I can plug into. I can't find nothing on this pile. Um, but uh, either that or we're going to be looking at this powertrain control module. Uh, like I said, this thing has a brand new battery in it. Just spank a new battery, brand new. So we don't know if something happened to this vehicle. Uh, did the battery go dead or something like that? Um, it's been a long time since I had uh, a Chrysler do this, but I've had this style computer, the two connector one, on something a little bit older, it gets silly on me once and it was doing all kinds of weird stuff and I just keyed off, disconnect the computer, reconnect it. That might be something to do or even a hard battery reset, you know. Um, you never know what might be going on here. Okay guys, I disconnected and reconnected the engine control module and we do have a check engine light. That is interesting to me. Uh, the check engine light gets commanded through the cluster, so um, just trying to take a look. I did have the key off. I disconnected the ECM right here, reconnected. The happy light came back on, so that's interesting. I really think this thing may have been more of a logic lock problem. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at all of our DTCs and see what else we have here. Let's go ahead to all DTCs. We're going to see what pops now. Hmm. Now we got APP circuits. Wow, wow, okay. Shoot, this thing's got some issues, guys. Um, still missing a secret code from the BCM, uh, or from the PCM to the BCM. So let's go ahead and try and clear these all out and see what happens. I'm really curious. So uh, we do have a happy light. That's always good, but things aren't right, as you see. Still got a no crank, and we have the security light. The security light's going to be because the BCM's not getting uh, the feedback from the PCM at once. So now I got APP codes. That's interesting. I got APP1, APP2. Let's go ahead and take a look at our data in our powertrain control module. Let's go ahead here. I want to take a look at APP. So those are both reading. I wonder what's up here. Okay. 
make sure nobody's got something disconnected or I don't think it is because we have voltage. Nothing like an open circuit or totally closed circuit there. Don't know where to get to the connector. The connector's up top there. That's gonna be a bear to get to. Um, we gotta play PI here. I don't know what happened. All right, I'm just finishing up a self-test on the cluster here, seeing what's going on. Um, guys, just so you know, every once in a while, I'm getting a lightning bolt flash for the throttle, you know, the, the lightning throttle bolt, or lightning bolt for the throttle, pardon me. I'm, there you go. Oh, no, that's a door. Every once in a while, that's popping. And uh, let's see, test complete on our self-test of the IPC. Let's go ahead here, check out. PCM, let's just see what codes we got in our PCM now. I did not have APP circuit codes before, and I do now. That's really interesting, 2127, 2122. I don't think the voltages on these things are low, but they very well might be. Boy, I sure would like to know the whole story, uh, what really happened. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and do a APP learn here real quick, or should I say an ETC learn, see if it'll actually kick us out or not. And just so you know, also, I did a reset uh, under guide functions. I did a reset of the, uh, of the uh, what you call it, uh, of the ETC. Uh, I did a reset of the PCM, should I say. I'm trying to talk and hold this camera here and everything else. So, okay, so let's go ahead, not drop my computer. That would make things bad, right? I'm going to hit continue. Ignition must be in run. Okay. Press and hold to the floor, okay. Continue. This is reminding me of that other APP uh, code problem I had uh, about a week ago. That was an interesting one. So learn ETC complete. It didn't fail. That's good. Let's hit the continue button. And uh, Learn ETC has passed, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and exit out, close out of here, and let's see if we still set some APP codes, because I had voltages that were decent. Um, now I got all the codes. <laughs> I wonder if this uh, ETC is messing up here. Um, APP, so maximum stop, all kinds of codes for this APP system. We're getting all kinds of issues there. So um, as you saw before, I've told you guys before, I'm telling you, the ETC learn function puts the uh, computer in a super sensitive uh, mode, but uh, I don't think that'll stop it from running. I know uh, my buddy Dane had that uh, vehicle that had a throttle body that was stuck open uh, with a bolt or something in it, and it wouldn't crank and start. So you guys saw I got one crank start and stall on this thing. But we do have that check engine light now back. We didn't have that before. That's really, really interesting. Um, now the PCM says lost of communication with the vehicle security control module. Oh boy, look at this. So now the PCM setting the code 1068, U0168. I'm gonna go ahead and type that onto the Identifix real quick. U0168, this is getting to be mighty interesting here. All right, so guys, we got the battery disconnected. I got my little jumper wire, uh, we're just, uh, Jumping across positive and negative there to try to make this thing uh, lose whatever bad memory it has. Maybe this will do something. I'm going to give it a couple minutes like this and I'll get back to you. And also so you guys know that uh, that Star Bulletin um, does have a bunch of information about a couple of codes that we're getting. However, I don't think it's going to be related because basically in the procedure here, they got you starting the vehicle up and running it and all kinds of stuff. Nothing about a no crank, no start. So. I don't think that's the way I want to go, but I am interested in the U0168 uh, code. Um, I didn't see anything on Identifix for it, and unfortunately on all data, it came up with a zero. I had nothing there, so let's go ahead. Uh, communication diagnostic procedure must be performed, blah, blah, blah. So body verification test. So this is interesting. This is one of the ones where you put a body control module and it doesn't really need to be programmed, I don't think. Um, so they say reset the... Uh, let's turn ignition on, disconnect all, blah, 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 make sure accessories off, make sure the battery is fully charged, ignition on, diagnostic. If any repairs were made uh, to the RFH, 
select diagnostic pre procedures, reset to RFH. I did not reset to RFH, guys. I did reset on the PCM. I should have tried to reset on a BCM and RFH too. Ignition off, ignition on. Da -da -da. So that's just pretty much not helping. Let's go back. Communication diagnostic procedure. And what's really interesting, guys, is I think everything's online. I don't think we have an issue with uh, the network. The physical wires, I think, are in place. Um, but they're saying check all ECUs for updates, da da da. I really don't see see a lot going on here. Um, what was our code? Our code was this uh, loss in creation with vehicle security control module. Man, all right. Well, well, I'm continuing to peruse. I think it's time to go ahead and reconnect that battery. So. All right, we got that battery dis, uh, reconnected after being disconnected. It's about probably a solid six minutes I had that thing jumped. Usually that's enough in my experiences. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and see what's happening inside here. Before I even plug the scan tool, I wanna take a look what happens. Um, you know, we do have our key, we can lock, unlock. So that's good. Let me go ahead and push the brake down. And I'm cranking it right now, pedal down. And we got a no crank, no start. And we do have the check engine light. Let's see if we still have the throttle body light. I had a throttle body light that was flashing on and off there. That can't be good. Oh, there we go, it's running now. Start, crank, stall. Ran with the misfire, I'll tell you that right now. It was definitely missing. Um, let's try one more time. And now, now I have nothing. No crank, no start. So we got a crank start stall after the battery is disconnected. Let's go check all our codes. See if we're possibly doing anything better here. I don't, uh, don't know what to say. And hey guys, just so you know, it's really important if you're gonna be diagnosing things, you gotta plug the scan tool in, right? It makes all the difference in the world. I do have my little breakout box, guys. I did not do anything with checking the CAN bus yet uh, or scope checking anything. I don't think we're gonna have that type of problem because we do have all this communication over here. Let's see if the Y-Tech picked back up. And uh, return a vehicle selection. I'm gonna have to exit out, go back in here. That's the way that goes sometimes. Gotta go ahead and connect the device, Card at 3 Plus. And once we get that connected, Device connected, now I'll go ahead up here and clip this. We should be able to get in there. I wonder if this battery didn't go dead and corrupt stuff. So we're gathering information. We got 25 DTCs set. Awesome. Everything is awesome. Okay. So all DTCs. So ever since I did the ETC learn, I got these active codes that are saying we got a problem with our APP. Mm. Wow. Well, guys, this is a challenge for me. All right, guys, I might be taking a big risk here. I don't know, but what's the worst we could do? The reason I'm not so worried about trying to program this thing is because it's setting all those APP codes and all the AP voltages uh, look okay. Um, so I'm just gonna roll with it and we'll try this. So we're gonna go ahead and do it to it, guys. Uh-oh, only one of one left. I gotta go buy some more. Let it continue. We're gonna have to log into Tech Authority. All right, we're letting it rip. Um, I really feel this thing had some sort of logic lock going on, and that might be causing the communication uh, being corrupted between the body control module and the powertrain control module. So we're gonna flash this. Um, also, I'm leaning this way because of the way all those codes are in the uh, train, uh, powertrain control module for the APP codes. So we're gonna see what happens. I mean, you never know what's gonna go on with a Chrysler, that's a fact. I don't know if you guys remember when these things, the 2014 model of this thing came out, they had all these things lined up, they couldn't make them run, all the engineers were scrambling, trying to write software to make, these, make this thing be happy. But, um, so we'll see, we wanna see if that red light, that security light will go out. And uh, guys, I'm not using my own maintainer, I'm living on the edge here, I'm trusting the snappy. Um, I believe this is a pretty good charge, but we're on the uh, flash program function here, so everything should be all right. I don't expect to have any problems, but yep, I really was interesting, uh, very interested by the fact that unplugging this computer, replugging it back in, we gained a security light, uh, or should I say check engine light. That was pretty, 
pretty interesting. Now, just so you guys know, I don't think there's an issue with a top-down scan tool on this vehicle. I think this vehicle just has so many different issues going on all at the same time that, you know, we're getting random codes even with the Y-Tex, so I really don't think the top-down is the issue. Um, so just letting you guys know that fact as we're programming here, we're getting chugging along here. The more I think about it, I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, actually fixes the problem with the vehicle. I mean, it'd be awesome if it does. We'll see. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn the key off. We're over here and turn the key off. And uh, guys, for those of you still listening, um, I forgot what type of architecture car we were on when I was thinking about just doing the PCM replace function. I don't know if I said that or not. So keys off, continue. Probably gonna make us wait 20 seconds or 30 seconds or something. And when I turn that key back on, I'm gonna be looking for that security light. That's gonna be the big, big uh, question. So turn the key on. I'm hoping that security light stays off. There's the security lights on and off and back on. Dang, no good. All right. So I'm going to hit continue. So the flash was successful, but I don't think we got uh, any more forward progress, if you will. So it's rescanning the vehicle. We'll go ahead and see view DTCs. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clear all these out. Let's clear them all. And then I, would, I do wanna do the reset on the BCM and the RFH hub. So close. So why is it not letting me clear out? So IPC says lost communication with uh, PCM's active. Steering wheel position sensor, uh, calibration missing. We've got a lot of stuff that we did not have before, but everything's saying lost communication with the PCM, so, and they're all active. So I wanna go back. I'm gonna turn the key off and let it sit for a second because possibly uh, those codes, uh, or those communication codes will go away and come back. I would also take a look at a network diagram of how the topology is on this car, just to see if anything uh, gives me any, any ideas of what might be happening. Now, I have not tried to crank the vehicle yet, but just knowing that this security light goes off and comes back on, that's gonna be an issue. And uh, man, I'm leading towards a PCM. About the shotgun a PCM in this thing, I tell you what. But have not made the call yet. All right, so we got more codes than we, <laughs> we have more codes now than we did before, even after clearing them. Let me go ahead and try to clear all DTCs one more time. Wow, I might try to restore vehicle configuration. So, no response, failed PCM. Okay, so PCM's being dumb. Even though it's up there, it's not really doing a good job of talking right now. Uh, let's go to guided functions. We're gonna go over here, reset ECU. I'm gonna hit PCM, continue, continue. You can only do one at a time, so it's kind of silly like that. It was reset successfully, continue, reset ECU. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue. And uh, let's do uh, RFH and continue, continue. Oh, wow, I hit our reset to RFH, everything went off here. That was interesting. Okay, and close. So now, oh no, I dropped my phone. That's no good. So now with, uh, when I reset to RFH, everything went dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the ignition back on. And we got the security light right away. It's not come back in. Oh, come on, it'll come back. Now I'm gonna reset the body control module. We're gonna just go ahead and reset everything and then uh, what the heck, I'm gonna do a proxy configuration alignment and everything else, so. Let's see, body control module, where are you? BCM, let's go ahead and reset that bad boy. Continue. So uh, the key cycled when I reset the BCM. Cycled on and off, that was interesting. Still have the security light. I think this PCM is probably on its way out, out to launch. So that resets successfully. Let's go ahead and do a proxy configuration alignment. Uh, they want the radio on. Always make sure the radio's on. Um, I think the radio's on. Yeah, it must be on. Media, how do you work this thing? Connected to Bluetooth audio device. 
Well, interesting thing, guys, I got power steering in the vehicles off. That doesn't usually happen much. So ignition's on, continue. We're gonna restore this proxy configuration. Okay, so ECU not active right here. We got, it's not cool. It's not happy. So that PCM definitely took a, took a dump on us. I'm trying to align it even though it says not, not there. Let's see if it passes. That'd be pretty interesting if it does. Proxy alignment's complete, okay. Close the doors, unplug the tool, wait for the bus to go to sleep. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and turn the ignition off. Unplug the scan tool. They want this uh, network to go to sleep here. And hood's open too, I'm not so worried about that, but uh, we'll see what happens. At this point, guys, I got probably been here an hour and I'm not making any headway. Um, Besides getting the check engine light to come back on. That's pretty cool. Where is the throttle body on this bad boy? I'll take a look at the throttle body where it is. So there's our uh, throttle body there. I'm just thinking about why would this thing be setting APP codes, throttle body, maybe causing an issue, maybe not. Half tempted to take this case apart, pry it apart, and take the EEPROM off that and see if it, uh, I wonder if it's corrupted or something else going inside there. I really don't know. Okay, I heard a little humming go to sleep, like the uh, high pitched noises that go around transmissions and stuff. Uh, so I think the network is asleep now. We'll go ahead and hop back in there and see if anything's better. I bet you we'll probably get a crank start stall again. I'm just gonna go right to it, go right to it. No, nope. nothing. Okay. I'm half tempted to tell the shop to try getting, uh-oh, I really broke it. The uh, key wasn't turning off, I was on run. I think we have a computer problem, but guys, you're just sitting hear me talk a lot. And that's all you're getting here in this video. A lot of talking, a lot of thinking. All right, guys, so after doing the proxy configuration alignment, I, I don't even know what I did. I went back, I was gonna go check codes again. It wasn't starting. I waited a little bit. Now it plugged in and it started. So I might not have let the vehicle sit long enough but we've, we've got ourselves a runner at the moment. And this thing is lit up like a Christmas tree as you see here. We've got a couple codes, one or two, right? Um, wow, okay, so what, what did we do to make this thing work? That's the big question. Uh, we reflashed the computer. I reset all the modules. I did a proxy configuration alignment. After the proxy configuration alignment, I still had a security light on. Uh, after a little bit, but then I had to key off for a little bit. I think I walked in circles and answered a phone call and I came back, I was like, well, let me check codes again. Plugged in the scan tool and I figured, just let me go ahead and stomp on the brake pedal and start this thing up and it fired up. So I do not have throttle response right now, guys. I got nothing on a pedal. So I'm gonna go back and see by chance what we have here. This thing has so many codes, all DTCs. So we've got our our APP codes definitely going on. We got a steering angle sensor missing calibration. All of these other codes, well here, let me clear them. I got too much to look at. My uh, brain can only process so much information at a time. So I really gotta go and see what we have. Okay, so we got all of our APP. We got an implausible steering angle sensor. Um, that can be caused by that uh, steering wheel sensor calibration. Uh, dimmer circuit cabin temperature. Wow. Okay. So what I'm going to do at this point, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and learn my EPS sensor. We're going to do that real quick. Should be pretty quick and easy. EPS so we can get rid of a couple codes. Um, miscellaneous functions, EPS learn, and I'm going to hit continue. So I don't know if they want this thing to be running or not, but place the vehicle on uh, flat surface, steering wheel centered. It is. And let's go ahead, um, hit continue. 
turn the wheel, lock the lock, full times, full right, full left, and full right, and then back to center. So we're gonna go full right, full left, full right, back to center. Okay. And then we're gonna hit the okay or continue. Now we got to turn it left, one quarter turn pass center, right one quarter turn pass center, and uh, that left one quarter turn pass center. This is always confusing. So if I turn it to the left, to the center, and then pass center, I think is what they want. So we'll go ahead and go to the, that's uh, left one full turn. There's a quarter turn. Go to the right. And go to the left. And then straight. And we're going to hit continue. Turn ignition off. Continue. So I really think this is a case of a logic lock of some sort. Don't know exactly how, so let's see if this passes and completes. Cycle ignition to run. Continue. I heard a throttle body click that time. That was interesting. EPS learn complete. Okay. And let me go back and uh, I'll go to all DTCs. I'll clear them all one more time. We got to get rid of these APP codes. Because those are the only ones we got going on. This is like, oh, no, it's not okay. This is okay. Okay. Not worried about that. Not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. So right now we only have APP codes. So let me go back to our topology, we're going to go back to the PCM. We're starting to look like a clean vehicle here, guys. I really think this is just a really badly logic locked vehicle. Um, I'm going to try and get this PCM over here. I'm sorry for the chic camera. And guys, I don't have time for editing lately, so uh, you're just going to have to deal with it. I do appreciate everybody taking the time to watch, but I really just have been hard pressed for time. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do the ETC learn and hit OK, continue. Ignition's in a run position and we're going to hit continue. So I'm going to go ahead and stomp on this thing to the floor all the way down. We're going to hit continue. And let go and press continue. And if we get rid of the throttle body light, this thing's gonna, probably going to be back to doing good. So I hear that. ETC's passed once again. So we're going to go back to our DTC's. No codes. I think it's fixed, guys. Um, we'll fix from what? I don't know. So let's go ahead and got our check engine light, ABS light on a bulb check. Service. So we got an ABS light now. Let me go ahead. We got to figure out this ABS light. What's going on there? Now I don't have. Uh, guys, I don't know if you know, but the Y Tech sometimes when you're plugged into a vehicle, the ABS light will flash. I don't know about this, but we do have service uh, park brake system. So let me go to all DTCs again. Service anti-lock brake system, and I don't have an anti-lock brake message. Let me go directly to this module. Um, don't like that. Why don't I have a code popping? But this is happy vehicle right now. It's running. Okay, so unfortunately my battery went dead as is recording. Good news is I got another battery I've been recording on lately. Um, so we have no throttle response, but we don't have any codes. So, I mean, when I hit the gas pedal, oh, the ABS light went out. So I don't know if that's normal throttle response. 
I have nearly a clean bill of health on this thing. I'm going to go ahead and drop it in gear and see if we can move and see what happens. Pop this in the reverse. Okay. All the brake, parking brakes on. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, it has plenty of, uh, plenty of, plenty of giddy up. I don't need to do much more than that. The throttle's working. So guys, uh, this was an incredibly interesting one. Uh, I, I think it was a severe logic lock. All kinds of craziness is going on here. And I'll be the first one to tell you, it was super challenging for me to even uh, go about finding how I'm gonna diagnose it. You know, there's so much stuff going on here. I mean, where do you go? I don't feel that um, necessarily following a flow chart would have fixed it because all the resets of the modules, I don't did it, think did anything. Um, maybe they did, uh, maybe they didn't, but I think it was the proxy alignment because after a proxy alignment, that's when the key will be off for two minutes. And I don't think I did two minutes, so maybe I really got to follow the directions better. But this thing seems to be in good shape. Maybe the battery just went dead. I'm really hoping the customer didn't jump anything backwards and cause an intermittent problem that's going to be showing up in the future. But, you know, when we didn't have a check engine light, and the check engine light is turned on by the engine control module, right? And that's through the CAN bus. It's going through the cluster over there. So, um, you know, when we unplug the PCM and plug the PCM back in, that was a clue that we have a logic lock issue. When I did the AP or ECT learn and it failed and we said all those APP codes, that was another thing. It's like, wait a minute, I don't think that these voltages are bad. I think something else is going on. And also uh, playing around with everything else. Uh, I think when I disconnected the battery and reconnected the battery, uh, after having the battery disconnected for a while, we started seeing all kinds of modules setting codes saying, hey, the PCM's not playing well here. So really not a wiring issue, uh, network wiring issue, more of a logic lock issue causing this issue here. So very interesting stuff. Guys, if you haven't signed up for the core premium membership, be sure to check that out. Um, I'll go over stuff like this. I'm working on some other network diagnostic information. There's a lot of stuff I'm working on. I'm just trying to get it up to the site, but lots of good information there. If you don't understand how to uh, diagnose basic electricity, I'll teach you how to do that online. Uh, core and premium members, you are entered in to win the AES Wave uh, test lead kit. I'll be giving those away probably one a month for the next few months, uh, depending on how many I have from Carlos. And uh, you guys have a great day. I got to start my weekend. Bye-bye.